Wow. Mmm. Ooh. That's so good. Hey you all, it's Shelly Wellness here and welcome to The Mindful Plate. Today we are going to be making a vegan butternut squash gluten-free gnocchi. If you've ever had gnocchi, then you know it's those delicious potato-like dumplings, but instead of potato, we're gonna use butternut squash and we're gonna keep our flour gluten-free for all of you who are a little sensitive or you just need to rest from all the gluten in the flour. So it's very easy, it comes together quick and we're gonna serve it with a lemon cream sauce. Let's get into the recipe. Hey, I'm your host, Shelly Wellness. I'm on this journey to elevate our consciousness around food, and I invite you to join me. On this channel, I'll share recipes created with mindfulness rooted in wellness. Welcome to The Mindful Plate. Now, I used to buy my own gnocchi, but when I realized how easy it was to make, I stopped doing that. So you're gonna roll your sleeves up on this one, all right, because we're gonna be using flour, getting our hands in there and mixing. So to start, we have some butternut squash. I just took butternut squash and roasted it, and I just need three quarter cup of it mashed. Now the nice thing about using butternut squash, one, it gives a beautiful color. So you're gonna have this kind of light orangey, turmeric -y yellow kind of pasta, but also butternut squash has a higher fiber content than just using regular potato. So if you're looking to amp up your fiber and eat pasta at the same time, this is the answer. and you can skip arm day. <laughs> Cause this is the workout right here. So I only need three quarter cup of this puree. So I'm gonna add my three quarter cups into here, back into this bowl. And what's left, when I have leftover purees of like pumpkin or butternut squash or anything like that, I just put it in the freezer. And whenever I wanna make something like butternut squash waffles or pumpkin waffles, which I have a video for if you wanna check it out, also gluten-free, then I can just use that to add to that batter. And then we're gonna add half a cup of all-purpose gluten-free flour. When you're measuring out this flour, it's best to spoon it in. Do not use your measuring tool and scoop in because you'll end up getting more flour than you need. So you just wanna take a spoon, spoon it in, and just make sure that it's level. So we have our flour, gonna add this in. And then lastly, we just need a third of a cup of arrowroot flour, add in. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to my hands, cause I don't want this to get too sticky. And then I'm just gonna get in and form a dough. You know what I forgot to add, folks? Some salt. We definitely wanna put some salt in this dough and a little bit of seasoning. This is my favorite. Put a little bit of seasoning in there and then work that dough. Mmm, that smells good. Once this dough comes together, I'm gonna add this to a surface, a smooth surface, and just knead it a little bit, let it keep on coming together. Mmm, it smells so good. So now it's together the way we need it to. And I'm just gonna form this into a log. But I'm gonna do a long log. As long as I can get it. Now, when it comes to making gnocchi, you can be a purist, and gnocchi often has like little imprints in it, almost like a fork. And they actually have a gnocchi maker. However, we're just in the house chilling, and we want some pasta. And it doesn't need to be completely in the perfect shape for me to enjoy it. It just needs to be tasty and cooked. This is another one of those dishes that requires your presence. It's mindful cooking at its best because you gotta sit with every single one of these dumplings, you know? And you have to form them and shape them individually. Now, if you have a gnocchi maker, then that takes a lot of the work out for you. But for those of us who don't have a gnocchi maker, our hands are a gnocchi maker. And if you have the time and you wanna be present and just want to, you like making things with your hands, this is one of those dishes that's fun to make. If you have children and you wanna teach them how to cook, this is another one of those dishes that's fun to make. They can make the dough, they can shape the gnocchi, and you can help them with the cooking. 
For those of you who want that classic gnocchi look, then you can use a fork and just kind of press into the sides and you get that, that gnocchi dumpling look. Now the great thing about gnocchi is that it's really easy to cook. All you have to do is drop it in boiling water and once it rises to the top, it's done. Remember, it's essentially a flour dumpling with a potato, in this case, butternut squash. And you wanna make sure that you drop them in in batches. And they're gonna cook in different, uh, at different times because some of them are denser than others, some of them are lighter than others. So it all depends. But once they're floating, they're ready to go. And the cool thing about making gnocchi is that you could just make just what you need. You can make the gnocchi to this point, put it on a tray, put it in the freezer, and once it hardens, take it off that tray, put it into a plastic bag, and then put it back into the freezer until you're ready again. And once you're ready to cook it, you come to this point where you boil, and once they rise to the top, they're ready to go. Oh, that's good. Mmm. You know what I like about gnocchi? It's kind of like gummy and chewy in a way. And I like for my mouth to play with food. I don't know if this makes sense, but I like it when food gives my mouth something to do. You feel me? And gnocchi gives your mouth something to do. I love this. So while we're cooking off the rest of our gnocchi, we're gonna start in our lemon garlic cream sauce. So we have some water in here, and then to make this creamy, I'm gonna be adding coconut cream. Now, some of you might not like the flavor, but I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna put enough garlic in here to mask that coconut flavor. But the coconut cream is just to make sure that we have that creamy texture. Plus, we're gonna be adding a little bit of arrowroot powder to thicken it so that it mimics that creamy, kind of heavy cream sauce that you would have if you were having an Italian meal. For the garlic, I'm gonna be using the equivalent of 10 cloves. If I had cloves, I'd just drop them in here, but I have minced garlic, so I'm gonna be using the equivalent of 10 cloves. So we're just gonna blitz this and then add it to a pot. Ooh, ooh, that's garlic, wow. Now when I make gnocchi, I can leave it just like this, but I personally like it when it's a little bit crispy. So what I tend to do is after making the gnocchi and boiling it, and it's all ready, I then add it to a pan of hot oil and I crisp it on both sides and that way I can enjoy it with a nice crunch. Y'all don't be like me. I have kitchen hands, so this is splashing all over the place because I didn't fully dry my gnocchi. But you wanna make sure you dry your gnocchi if you're gonna fry it, because if not, splatter, splatter. But honey, these hands have been through all types of heat and fires and uh, you know, here we are. But for the rest of y'all, use some utensils. <laughs> so now our gnocchi is all cooked off nice and crispy the way I like it. Put that to the side, and we're gonna start on our cream sauce. Mm, that garlic is really nice in there. I like that. We need some salt, just a tad. And we're gonna add some lemon. All right, let's taste this now. Mm. Ooh, now you're probably wondering how much lemon juice should I add, Shelly? Listen, an intuitive amount, that's how much. Add a little bit, taste it, see what your taste buds say. So to make our air root slurry, instead of using water, I'm actually gonna use the liquid that I'm already working with because I don't want to introduce any water because I have this tasting just how I want it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the liquid, add that into a cup, and then add some arrowroot powder, make the slurry, and then pour that back into the pot so it can thicken. When you're making your arrowroot slurry, you wanna make sure that there's no lumps. It's gonna look just like that. 
You wanna pour this in while stirring. Steady stream. You can see it's thickening already. It's like magic. All of a sudden the texture's changed. Now look at our sauce. It's a little thicker. We're just gonna cook it a little bit and as it heats, it'll thicken and also as it cools, it'll thicken. Wow. A little more lemon and a little more salt. Mm. That's it. That's it. That's it. You just know. You just know when it's ready. That's it. The sauce is a little thicker. If you want it thicker, you can add more arrowroot, but for me, this works. Just enough to kind of coat the spoon, but still fall off. So now we bring the final dish together. I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to my pan. And because I love garlic, I'm gonna add some garlic to the pan. This is optional, you don't have to. But I wanna add some veggies to go with my gnocchi. So we have some spinach. And you know, spinach wilts down really quickly. So I'm just kind of cooking this down a little bit. Add in a few peppers. I don't want the peppers to be fully cooked because I like that raw crunch. But if you want your peppers to be softer, feel free to cook them all the way down. But I still like that vibrancy in my dish. Now I'm gonna add my gnocchi back in. Remember what I was saying earlier about using butternut squash, how it gives it a rich, vibrant color? Typically the gnocchi I see made with potato is kind of like a blandish, whitish color. But this I love because it's just so rich. Almost orange, almost brown, but either way, it's just a delight to the senses. I love seeing this in a pot. Just heating it just enough to wilt the spinach and reheat that gnocchi. Then we're gonna add our sauce. to try it y'all this is so good you know what I love about this one the gnocchi already has an amped up fiber content because we added butternut squash but then also adding the fresh veggies just gives it another layer and this lemon sauce mm, it smells so good I added a bit of lemon zest on top to brighten it mmm 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 wow Oh, so good. For those of you who are wondering about the coconut, you don't taste it. All we taste is lemon and garlic, just like we wanted. And what I also love about this dish is for those of you who are switching to plant-based, you are giving up meat and you're trying to figure out how to create meals that feel hearty and filling. Gnocchi is perfect, especially this butternut squash gluten-free gnocchi because it gives you a mouthfeel that makes you chew almost in a way as if it were meat. This is not a type of pasta that just melts in your mouth. This is the type of pasta that will definitely give you that mouth feel of having something substantial in you. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is the vegan gluten-free butternut squash gnocchi with a lemon cream sauce that we serve with some spinach and some fresh peppers. If you want the recipe, you already know, click the link in the description because I send a newsletter out every Tuesday. And in that newsletter, I have all the recipes available for you. For those of you who wanna stay in touch, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell because I'm here on YouTube every week as well. Until next time, y'all, eat well and be well. Mwah.